Howdy y'all, we are back out here at John LeMaster Civitan Park and we are filming part two of the Only This Disc Challenge. And so for this week's video, we are going to be throwing only mid-ranges. If you didn't get a chance to check out the putter only round, feel free to look at that. Uh, there is a link in the channel. But uh, I shot there, spoiler alert. Sorry, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, uh, I'll edit that out. For those of you who know, you know. And while we are moving on to mids, I think it's going to be just a different kind of ball game in general. And looking forward to seeing how this course goes without my main approach disc and also putting with not putters. So, what do you guys think? How are we going to shoot? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, let's jump into hole one! Hole one is a textbook shot to open things up for us. Nothing really to worry about on the fairway. You're going to throw a simple hyzer for you left-handed backhand players, avoiding the sidewalk on the right and the parking lot on the left. Coming into hole one, it's 370 feet, so I still don't feel like I can get all of this distance with just a mid-range. But because it's an open fairway, I am going to throw a bounty which is more understable. When you have the chance to open up and the wind is favorable, throw something understable, flip it up, and it usually can get you a little more distance if that's something you're struggling with. And honestly, that's what I'm going for. Just a good bit of distance while still landing in line with the basket. I'm not trying to get crazy because a birdie is pretty much out of the question here. So I just want to get close. And here I have landed a pretty decent distance. Uh, I'm running a putt, but nothing too crazy once again because I don't have any putters to putt with during this round. So I'm putting with an Emac Truth for most of the round. Because I don't have that putter, I'm not going to feel too confident. But we'll give it a run anyways, why not? Just a simple tap in to start us off with a par on hole one. Hole two is one of the trickier holes on the course. Coming in at 358 feet, it is a doozy. You're gonna make your way down the fairway, sloping just right and going eventually down a long tunnel, avoiding a huge chasm on your right. At 350 feet, you may think, okay, stepping up from a putter to a mid-range might be a good idea, but I usually throw a putter on this because I'm not trying to bite off a ton, so I'm having to throw the mid-range here with a little more touch than I want, or I have the option to try to push it far and clear the gap, which is what I'm going for, and so I give it a decent bit of power trying to let it float out there, and you're going to see where it landed. Because I gave it so much power, it actually sawed off a bit early because I threw it on that forehand. And when you throw forehands, they are going to hyzer out eventually with most more overstable discs. And so I have to just pop out and I tried to once again close a gap rather than just taking what I was given. I wanted to park it close to the basket. And so it puts me in this awkward scenario where there isn't really a look besides a hammer or like an overhead throw which isn't something that most people are comfortable with. And thankfully I'm able to go over top and it lands over close to the basket. I really don't feel like I played this hole well, but I end up with a putt and I'm just hoping I can save the par here. Once again, sometimes you're gonna get lucky while you play a hole and it's key to make sure that you note that you got lucky on the hole. I think I could easily walk away from this and go, oh yeah, well I got a par, okay, cool. But singing that putt doesn't mean I played the hole well. And that's a key thing to focus on. You go from one of the harder holes on the course to one of the more attackable ones. Hole three is a simple forehand shot if you have that or a slow turnover with the backhand. But you're just going to make your way out this very short tunnel, eventually finding the basket out on the right. This is a hole that I absolutely love and feel really comfortable on a forehand with a putter. So in mid range, I'm trying to throw it a little softer and I was pretty worried that I would saw it off too early uh, because if you don't throw mids at their full power, they're not gonna fly correctly. And that's the key with all of the discs. Um, if you don't get the disc enough speed, it's not gonna fly well. But I was able to because I hung it really close to the left side, had a park job and feeling so good about this. It was awesome. Probably one of the best feeling shots of the day after I narrowly dodged that tree.
hole four, probably one of my favorite holes on the course. You can either play the big forehand or you can play something that turns over slowly and you'll find the basket down on the right once you clear these trees. I think there are few shots that feel as beautiful to execute as the turnover shot. So I'm pulling my bounty out here. I love this hole for this shot. Man, find that disc that you can just put on a little bit of an Anheuser line and watch as it just flies, flattens out, and lands. Guys, this is easily the best shot of the day. Like, I know I said the last shot was good, but holy cow. To walk up on a blind tee shot and just have a park job, incredible. Learn that turnover shot. It's going to help you out so much. At 393 feet, hole five is a doozy. Fairway slopes down to the right and you wanna avoid that mess there on the right, but the basket sits in a little alcove in the back. So on this hole, you do have some options. You can go really big, but I like the forehand verdict. I'm gonna throw it on a flex line because I wanted to get distance without trying to throw a ton of power. If you overpower that flex, it's going to roll over into the sidewalk. And if you throw it too soft, you'll saw off into the right and that's not good either. The issue here in this round is that I, or I'm really too close to throw this mid range uh, and I'm too far to just regular putt. So I have to do this awkward like jump putt know what your discs can, can do. Know how far out you need to be able to fully throw a disc. Yeah, super confusion because once again, I have no idea if that was the right play or not, but I do know that I couldn't just throw something out there because I was too close to let a mid fly. Knowing what speed you can throw a disc at to get the actual flight of the disc is critical. And on these mid range shots, it's super important. Even though I made a big putt there, that second shot worried me. Hole six coming in at 250 feet. There is a lot to avoid on the right, but this is an island hole. So if you miss the island, you are going to be playing from a drop zone just outside of the rocks. But don't worry, it plays longer than 250. Now, if you remember in the last video, I made the island with a putter. So I'm stepping into this feeling pretty confident, which is wrong. I'm thinking of the last shot more so than this shot. So I, I'm trying to get my body loose and I'm telling myself, just throw this out there, throw it nice and soft, which once again is wrong. I need to throw the disc as the disc is meant to be thrown. If I throw it soft, things could go bad. If I throw it hard, things could go bad. Just throw the disc that you're throwing well. If you pick a mid, throw a mid. If you pick a putter, throw a putter. Don't throw a mid like a putter because what's gonna end up happening is you hang it out and boom, I'm short of the island. I threw a faster disc less distance because I didn't throw the disc that was in my hands the way it was meant to be thrown. And because of that, I'm now here at the drop zone rather than being inside the island for what should be a simple two on this hole. I know I can get a mid range all the way out there, but I mentally got in my head and decided to not throw it correctly. So when I'm putting this far out with a mid range and not a putter, I'm not going to have a good time. And therefore I'm not confident in this putt at all. which shows because I missed short and early. If you're hyzering out super early, you didn't commit to the putt. Make sure you commit to the putt even if you had a bad shot before. Hole seven has the most options of any of the holes so far. You can play something overstable to the right, understable to the left, or stable and shoot it right down the middle. Eventually you make your way down the fairway and down the hill to the basket. Now, this is a line that I absolutely love. I'm gonna hang it out on the left side of the tee box, and the key is use the whole tee box. Don't just think you gotta run up to the front every time. There's an angle out to the right that I can throw this on. Unfortunately, I throw it really low, and so I don't get everything I want, but that's why I love this line, and when I pick this line with a mid-range, because I know that even in worst case scenario, it's still going to give me a decent shot. I mean, I'm putting from here, and that's why I pick mid-ranges on a lot of holes, because at their worst, they still make you safe. 
Drivers can turn over, drivers can hyzer out, putters can go short, mid ranges, it's the best of both worlds. And of course, you got to talk to your disc to tell it to sit down when you make a risky run putt down the hill. Hole 8 plays at 255 feet, but it's uphill the entire time, so it's going to feel a bit longer. You're going to have to navigate quite a few trees to make your way through to the green, and there are some guardian trees, so get ready for some fun times. Looking forward to this because at this distance, I can actually get a mid-range all the way there, but I'm not necessarily trying to do that on this shot because I know that if I overpower this with all the trees, I'm gonna hit something. So I just throw it kind of pretty neutral, not full power, not half power, just throw the disc that's in my hand and I'm pretty happy with that shot. It's given me a look and man, I am missing my putter right now, but I'm gonna take the time think about the shot, make sure that I'm fully dedicated to this. That's what I want to do. I want to try to be fully dedicated to this and get this birdie without giving the pressure of, I have to make this birdie. I came out on the right side and I hit the basket, just needed to give it a little more and we would have had that. On hole nine, you got two choices. You have the gutsy line to the left. It is shorter to get to the basket, but a lot more trees, or you can play the safe hyzer out to the right. It's just a big hyzer trying to dive into the hill before landing near the basket. Hole nine, the last hole here for the video. I'm gonna go on that big hyzer swing, and that's what I'm looking for, and I wanted all of it. I'm gonna be honest, I wanted all of this, which is why it gets real risky Oh, I was so thankful I missed that tree. So, so thankful I missed that tree. I'm not as close as I wanted to be, but it's because I swung my wine too wide. Words? Swung my line too wide? Yeah. Dropping it in with the turbo and feeling really happy with the results of this round. All right, y'all. So that wraps it up for this week's video with mid ranges only. An interesting thing about this round was that I feel like a lot of the shots that are expected on this half of this course actually suit mid ranges pretty well. And you could throw a mid range at all of them. So I didn't really have to push anything farther than it needed to go like I did with some of the putter shots. But yeah, it was uh, it was fun. This was a really good one. I felt like we were connecting on a lot of stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, so that way you know when round three comes out. So round three, we're using all drivers. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys are pumped about it. And let me know, do you think that drivers are gonna go significantly worse? Or like when we went from putters to mids, or is it an improvement? I don't know. Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. JK. See you guys next week, but for now, we're going to leave you with the birdie. <laughs>